you know, on this point about about time, because this is what we've been speaking about. Time, what is it? Now we touched on the Ethiopic Gize, Gize, some possible ways of enunciating exactly what Gize is. This is Gi, this is Gi, Gagu Gi, the third order in the Ethiopic. And this is Ze, can be written like this, it can be written like this according to the phonetics and, and linguistics of the Afro-Shemitic language. It can be written in uh, transliteration. It can be transliterated in a couple of different ways. If you go to our spruce link from the line of Judah, L-O-J, society.org on Amharic and the Amharic Bible homeschooling and Amharic online, um, our companion um, website pages and portions of the ministry which touch on our language. The language is very important and stay tuned for the Ethiopic first language, a scroll that we've recently written and published on Ethiopic, the first language. So people ask, well, what was the first language? So this is a subject matter and topic matter that's very important because you recall in How to Make a Slave that taking away our language, our linguistics, was an important aspect of the Gentile world powers in the subjugation of the true Beta Israel, in the subjugation of the black sheep, the black sheep of the family, the, the black Jews, the black Hebrews, the so-called niggers and, and Negroes who were enslaved, in the trans-Ethiopic ocean slave trade. Now, that's also took place in time, you see, but that whole time period and the true knowledge of that time period and its effect and the ripple wave of its effect, even on us today, has been suppressed. Remember after Barack Obama was, um, after he was elected, everybody was talking about we are in post-racial, a post-racial time. So this is what brings us back to how time has been manipulated, how time has been manipulated. Now, there's a lot of beliefs about time that we hold, and most of these beliefs we hold it because it's, the, it's part of the rhetoric of the system of things or the Eurocentric, the European system of things. You know, they've made discoveries, new discoveries for them, and these new discoveries for them have been taken to be, well, Everyone thought the earth was flat. That's not true. The ancients had their own calculation and understanding, moreover, of time. Now, when we talk about the scriptures, the Bible, and Bible prophecy, and what time, and 2012, and the New World Order, and all these sort of things going on, we have to remember that a key element that helps us to, to overstand has been lost in translation. Lost in translation has been lost in translation, and that is concerning the true meanings of these ideas, of these words. Because most people just understand, barely understand, from a Gentile misconception or a white man's European misconception because of their own vanity and pride they believe that the way they see the world and the biblical scriptural world is the only way to view it and the only way to see it. And they constantly are bumping up against reality. And every time they bump up against reality, they act like it's a new discovery. You understand? This is a new discovery. But these things we get to find now that we have, you know, information has increased and we're able to know things just by the click of a mouse, now we get to really recognize, we get to challenge. There's a challenge to the old Eurocentric, the old world system. So when the Bible speaks about the end of the world, it's very important for us to understand what it means, what world is it speaking about. It's speaking about the Gentile world system, and it's not just on the political level. It's not just on the economic level, even though we see the ripples and the waves with the Arab Spring, 
with the, the downturn in the global economy, what's happening in the EU right now, with whether Greece or Spain or Italy, um, what's going